Out amongst the parks and gardens, there are many wonderful creatures. Just look at this one, for instance, with her gleaming bright red shell, a pretty little ladybird. This ladybird is called a two-spot. I expect you can see why. It's one of the most common types of ladybird to be found. Look how busily she's cleaning herself as she hangs on tightly with two of her six legs. She spends most of her time searching about for little insects called aphids, which are her favorite food. This makes her very popular with gardeners, as aphids are very damaging to some plants. Now, ladybirds are actually flying beetles. They have two transparent wings, which are protected by the hard shell which covers them and prevents them from drying out. She beats her wings extremely fast when she flies. In the early summer, the ladybird will lay her tiny golden eggs, and inside of one of those tiny eggs is me. I wonder which one. She lays us underneath leaves close to aphids, so that when we hatch out as larvae, we will have a feast. After four days, we have hatched. Although we look quite big here, we're actually very small, only as big as a pinhead. We stay for at least a day by our eggs and get as much nourishment out of them as we can. I'm afraid, at this stage, we don't look very pretty, do we? Hmm. Now I'm ready. The search for food has started. I'm off. I know there are aphids around here, somewhere. I'm sure I'll find some soon. What's that down there? It looks like lunch, and it's coming my way. Where's it gone? Is it up here? No. It's getting closer. Here it comes. Well, maybe he's a bit big. On the other hand, I'm very hungry. Here it comes again. I'll get it this time. Oh, dear. Maybe not. Uh-huh. Someone's caught a ride. You can't shake him off. Mm. 
No, he won't let go. He's got you. Hmm. Well, maybe I'll have better luck down here. I have to shed my skin three times over the next 18 days, and each time I do, I get quite a bit bigger. Can you see my spots beginning to appear? Now I have to do my job and start eating aphids. If I eat enough for three whole weeks, it'll give me the energy for my final change into a pupa or chrysalis, as it's otherwise known. All my brothers and sisters have to do the same. Sometimes they share with each other. Oh no, not you as well. Go and get your own. Look, I've attached myself to a plant by a foot at the end of my abdomen. And after a while, my outer skin will peel back and underneath I'm a pupa. Then I wait for about two weeks whilst inside I'm changing into a ladybird. Then all I have to do is split my case and try to get out. Now at last I can rest. My wings unfold and dry, and my soft shell begins to harden. Can you see the color gradually appearing on my back? Look, I'm a two-spot, just the same as my mother was. Now, what about something to eat? Look at these flowers in the garden. They've attracted lots of beautiful butterflies. The eyes of a butterfly have many different sides, like a diamond. Butterflies have 
antennae, which are like feelers, three pairs of legs, and two pairs of wings. They use their proboscis to drink the nectar from the depths of the flowers. There are many different types of butterfly. Have you ever noticed how some of them prefer certain flowers to others? This butterfly is called a small tortoiseshell. And this one is called a peacock. She's been looking for somewhere to lay her eggs, and now she's found the perfect spot, a clump of nettles. She has laid lots of tiny eggs, which are exactly the same colour as the nettle they've been laid on. If they can't be seen, they'll be safe. And inside one of them is me. After a while, the eggs change colour and we begin to hatch out as caterpillars. First, we have to bite the shell of our eggs and make a circle big enough for our heads to get through. A tough task for a minute caterpillar. Then we have to try and free ourselves from the egg. Look, I've done it. I have a dark head and an almost completely see-through body which is made up of 13 parts and 14 legs. I have tiny antennae which help me find my way off the eggs and onto the nettle leaf, which is my favourite food. Butterfly eggs are always laid in a sunny spot on the food that the caterpillars will eat when they hatch. Now, where is the tastiest bit of leaf, I wonder? Hmm, this bit's good. Look how empty our eggs look now that we've hatched. They look a bit like bubbles, don't they? As well as my antennae, I also have two simple eyes which help me find my way around our feasting ground. I need oxygen from the air, which I take in through small holes in the side of my body. I don't have any lungs, like you do. I eat and eat and eat all day long, and as I eat, I grow, and as I grow, I begin to change colour and become darker. Eventually, I will be completely black with tiny white dots. Hmm, well, I still have a lot more growing to do before I'm as big as this monster. Anyway, as I grow, my skin begins to feel tighter. Finally, it's too tight to carry on eating any more, so I split my skin and wriggle out, leaving my old skin behind me. Here I am in my new suit with plenty of room to eat and grow some more. Munch, munch, munch.
When a group of caterpillars like this gather together on a juicy clump of nettles like these, it doesn't take very long for this to look like this. Now I'm ready for my final molt. I've found a safe place to rest and I've anchored myself to a stem with silk thread from my spinnerets. I have to force off my old skin by carefully pushing out of it. And can you see? Underneath, I have changed into a beautiful pupa, or chrysalis. And once I've completely shed my skin, I wriggle myself into a comfortable position and then wait. Outside, I just change color, but inside, an incredible change is taking place. I'm changing into a butterfly. And after about 10 days, when I'm ready to come out, my chrysalis splits open and I can gently release myself. I have to pump my wings full of blood and stay here for at least an hour to let them harden and dry out. It's a good opportunity to practice uncurling my proboscis too. There it goes. My chrysalis is just an empty sack now. Now that I'm a butterfly, every part of my body from my wings to my feet is covered with tiny scales which give my wings their beautiful color and pattern. And now I can fly away to my first meal amongst the flowers. If you look very carefully through the long grass in your garden or in the park or in the fields, you might find one of these spiders. It's called a nursery web spider. 
and this one is trying to make a safe place for her egg sack. She carries the egg sack very carefully underneath her. It's made of silk and it protects the eggs inside it. Look, can you see her? She's weaving the stems of grass together. her quite a while and every now and then she has to stop and adjust her egg sack to make it more comfortable. Then she can carry on. Oops, I think she nearly fell off just then. She's a very patient spider, isn't she? This is a spinneret. It's where her silk thread comes from. She has eight eyes, but even so, she cannot see very well. Look, now she's made a nursery tent using her silk thread and the pieces of grass. All she has to do now is attach her egg to the inside where it can be protected and wait for her babies to hatch. And one of them will be me. We have just begun to hatch. Here we all are, grouped together, still in the protection of our nursery tent. We are called spiderlings. And look, Mother is waiting on the outside, guarding us from any danger. This is our empty egg sack that kept us safe before we were hatched. We stay in the shelter of our tent to start with, as we don't have any eyes or claws, or even spinnerets to make thread for webs. After a few days, we all shed our skin, and now we are proper spiders with eyes, claws, and spinnerets. So we can leave our old skins in the nursery tent and venture out into the big wide world. Can you see me? Here I am, behind the blackberries. Look how much bigger I am, and I'm not so dark as I was before. I have a hairy body divided into two parts by my waist, and four pairs of bristly legs, making eight in all. I'm not quite as pretty as this ladybird, or as colorful, and I can't fly either.
But spiders are very clever in their own way. We can make webs. Just look at this garden spider. It's night time now, and he's busily spinning his web. He draws the silk thread from his spinnerets using his legs. It takes a lot of practice to be able to do it this smoothly. Then he goes round and round and round. In and out, in and out. Spinning his thread and drawing it out at the same time. It only takes about one hour to make an intricate web like this, and most spiders make a new one every day, even if their old one is still undamaged. Look, he's nearly finished now. Now he eats a little hole right in the centre of the web so that he can easily get to either side. Then he waits. Ah, he's caught something. That was quick. Now he's wrapping it up to save it for later. Now let's see what's going on over here. Hmm, I don't think this is quite what it was supposed to look like. To you. Oh well, better luck next time. Look at this face. It looks like a monster, but really, it's a locust. It has four eyes, an armor-plated body, wings, and three pairs of legs, making six in all.
Can you see the hole under his wing? It's his ear. And look at these tiny holes on his abdomen. They're called spiracles. He breathes through them. He has antennae on his head, which are his feelers. Now, this is my mother laying her eggs. You can tell she's a female because her color is less yellow than that of a male. She has dug her abdomen down into the soft sand. She can stretch it to three times its normal length. The deeper the eggs are laid, the safer they will be. Now let's have a look at the eggs. Here they are. Quite a lot, eh? And inside one of them is me. After about three weeks, we begin to hatch. At this stage, we're called nymphs. We force our way up to the surface. Look, the second one is me. The first thing we all have to do is to shed our skin. We pump our body and try and push our skin off behind us. It's very hard work, but I am managing to do it. Look, nearly out. If I could just roll myself over. I'm a lovely bright color, but still rather soft. As soon as I'm out of my skin, I can jump off. A few days later, I've grown a little and my body has hardened and become much darker. Look how much more I have to grow before I become an adult. Quite a lot. As I grow, I shed my skin. This is called molting. And each time this happens, I change color. My wings begin to grow. They are still so tiny that I can't fly at all yet. So I usually walk but I do have long and very powerful back legs which help me make enormous leaps. If I'm frightened, I can jump up to 100 times the length of my body. I bet you couldn't do that. I spend most of the day eating. Look, here I am. Munch, munch, munch. Munch, munch, munching away. I lay along the leaf and hope I can't be seen. Even though my armor plating gives me some protection. We like to live in large groups, sometimes millions of us together, and we spend most of our time looking for food. Having all these legs does make it much easier to climb about on this grass, you know. As you can imagine, 
we are not very popular with farmers, as we can eat our whole crop down to nothing in no time at all. But we need to eat a lot to give us plenty of strength, until at last we are ready to mold for the final time and change into an adult locust. First, I have to find a plant to hang from. I attach myself firmly and very gently push myself further and further out of my old skin. I have to be very, very careful. I don't want to fall. Can you see my new body coming out? It takes about a half an hour for me to completely wriggle free. When I'm very nearly out, I hang upside down for a while to rest. My soft body begins to harden. My wings start to open up. Can you see my wings have opened up now? My old skin still hangs from the branch, like clothes on a washing line. After a while, my wings and body have a lot more colour, but I still have a bit of changing to do before I'm nice and yellow. There. Bye-bye. Must fly.